Hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Oh, yes, presents. to say this And I've been thinking for hours maybe days And I've been thinking of all your patience And I've been thinking of how it fills the space Between my past and present What's now and next It seems the current me in your name but I've been paralyzed I've been trying to get out of a pit that isn't really Talking about how I don't have time And you've been showing me my excuses You've been shining a different kind of light On all my past and present What's now and next It seems the current has me in your name So much. Um, yes, it's true. <laughs> I am Rachel Blackman, and um, I'm really honored to be here with my friends. I have my friend Zach Smith over here, who I've known for <laughs> many moons, and we have been playing music together for many more moons. Uh, <laughs> a long time, a hot minute. Um, and over here, I have a newer friend, Hampton, who is just <laughs> one of the best drummers that you will meet, and he can create looping drum machine magic. So if you need more of that in your life, you know who your guy is. Um, 
But I seriously, it is, it is an honor to be here. I felt really honored to be asked. And I feel honored by your presence. I feel honored by these guys. Just gratitude all around. And I, I've come here tonight to basically share with you my journal entries in song form. So that's a little forward and that's a little too hot and heavy right out of the gate. You can just take a break and go get a drink and come back for YG Tut set after mine because um, we'll get to know each other real quick. Uh, but I feel like honesty and vulnerability, it's kind of one of our most vital uh, things that we carry as artists. Um, and I've learned that uh, a pretty long way. And I, I feel like it's helpful context for you all in my own honesty. Like you might hear in some of my songs, you might think, who is this mysterious you that she is singing to this audience? Um, and for me, I'm a Christian, so my songs come out as prayers most of the time. Um, and I've found throughout my life that I write a lot of songs that come out for prayers and they are for the church. Uh, and then some are just between me and the Lord. And so I've kind of spanned these different genres. And um, I, I'm so curious about every type of music. And I don't often know where to pin myself when it comes to that, if I'm, if I'm honest again. Uh, but I've, I've found in this songwriting journey that often it's this falling forward into vulnerability. Um, and it's this process for me of static to kinetic and carrying something and carrying it forward, uh, which I love this theme because it, it's such a cycle in the creative process. And for so many years, I would think, oh, I don't have like, I don't have the right words, I don't have the right opinions. And it's so easy for me to just want to hide behind other people and be like, yeah, that, that sounds good. I'm going to say that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so to say my own, my own thing um, is a struggle. And that last song, um, you, you wouldn't believe. The title is called Paralyze. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's, it was, it's a very candid confession. Um, again, honesty. And the irony of it being, um, I felt stuck about two years ago. I just felt really mentally stuck in my songwriting and in my playing and how I thought about music in general. So I protested it and I stuck a cheap microphone in my computer and I said, I'm going to sing whatever comes out. <laughs> and it was a confession. Um, and that's the irony of it because I sang about my stuckness and then that carried me out of my stuckness. Um, static to kinetic motion. And I've, I've carried this idea around a lot. I've thought, okay, if I can just get to a breakthrough moment, you know, then I'll process what's going on inside me. And I've been unlearning that idea for the past few years, but I really unlearned it this past year. Um, I learned it especially in labor with our first child. My husband, Nick, is over here holding her. So if you hear sounds... That is Sylvia. Um, and uh, yeah, I found, I found a pretty profound lesson in not just waiting until you combust to create something. Um, this past year it was really hard, if I am candid yet again. Um, kind of like labor, there were these waves of pain. And they started out really... Uh, distant, you know, it started out with, with hard situations. I played and I sang for way too many funerals of young people, um, and that was this wave. And then, you know, friends' kids were getting really deathly ill, and that was a wave. And then, um, friends' marriages were falling apart. You know, it just seemed like it was this rotation of grief. But I still felt like, okay, okay, I can, I can make it, Lord. Like I can. You know, I'll get there. I'll get to some, to like the due date, you know, of Sylvia. And then once she's here, I'll grieve all that and it'll be fine. Um, but that didn't let up. And the grief got, it just kept getting nearer. Again, like labor. Um, and the grief came a little nearer. And my, my grandma's health, my mom's mom, um, started to decline pretty rapidly after a hospital visit. And she entered a hospice in her home not long after that. And this was just months out from my due date with Sylvia. 
And I felt more of the weight at that point, but I thought, okay, I've, I've, I can process this, but, you know, I'll, I'm going to, it's fine. Just carry on. Carry on. Uh, um, but yet again, a wave, a closer wave. And my mom called one day, um, and I'm not going to look at you, mama. But uh, she called, and she had news of um, a colonoscopy had returned. And she said um, that the same breast cancer that had been diagnosed twice before in her life, the first time at my age that I am now, um, she said, come back again, and as a, a stage four. And I remember in that moment, my prayer <laughs> was not polished. It was not right. I said, I, I, I must deal with this right now. I must deal with this. But the thing that I found um, as that like final wave, so to speak, came, and I found this to be true in the actual labor with my daughter, like over those 16 or so hours um, laboring with her, when I fought a contraction, when I fought the pain like a wave, Progress stalled. It kind of took longer. But when it came, and I accepted it for what it was, and I breathed, and I worked with it, and I prayed, I just stayed in this place. It was like I just stayed um, in this sanctuary of a place. And when that happened, I got closer and closer to meeting my daughter. And I realized that labor doesn't wait for our readiness. Grief doesn't wait for our readiness. But if we embrace it in the moment, it can birth something beautiful. It can birth life. Um, and there's so many parallels I could give to songwriting, how it's like when you create something inside of you, that its ultimate end exists outside of you and means so much more to so many people. Um, I could say all of that, but I think... I think the main uh, thrust of what it is I learned was it's okay that there's not, there's not a due date. If anything, a due date is a best guess. <laughs> and when you get to it, you don't know what it's going to look like. Um, but hope, this thing that propels us forward is, is because of life. It's not just because you have this um, image of the way things should go. Hope is propelled by a person and getting to meet a person. Um, and I found that when I got to meet my daughter. Um, so this next song, I decided I would use my words that I have now. I wasn't going to wait for some time in the future. And I, I took all of that. I took all that grief and I took all that hope. And it's very much a prayer, but it's also my way of honoring my grandmother and my mother uh, my daughter, and also myself as I have entered motherhood. And um, I've loved the Spanish phrase, dar a luz. And if you're a fluent Spanish speaker, forgive me, I know enough just to get by. But I've carried that one in my back pocket for years, and I've never been through labor, so I've never felt like I could use it. But now I can. And translated literally to English, it means to give the light. Uh, part of my daughter's name actually means that, means light. So I found it all the more fitting. Um, and I pray that uh, it would meet you where you are at, wherever there's grief, that you would feel light breaking through. Sing in August while I was singing about you, playing these songs on a gifted piano, two whole steps out of tune. My phone rang in mid August with mom getting more than you. And I realized then that the labor within doesn't start on the day that you do. 
dar a luz Dar a Lifted into her bed Born up by the daughters that she had birthed That stayed with her clear till the end I sang in October That song Cat Stevens played Unsure of the words it said more broken while watching her smile through the pain that I lose that I lose when I became Hospital room. We both screamed at the top of our lungs, and I'm still not sure who birthed who. That I lose. That. Tu cara quando me arrotigei eres una luz mi cariña Silvia Ray no vi nada más que tu cara quando me arrotigei Eres una luz, mi cariña, Silvia Ray. Dar a Thank you.